Hi folks and welcome to Breaking Woke, where we identify, debunk and dismantle the dangerous ideas of progressive liberals and the radical left. So today we're talking about an issue that pertains to my country, to a school, Brackenfell High. And here's the timeline for this series of events. A couple of weeks ago, I launched a book in the United States called Political Correctness Does More Harm Than Good. Yesterday, I was on the Gareth Cliff TV show debating against a panel, and there I am talking about the idea that PC politics and identity politics and all of this woke progressive nonsense is actually harming people. My interlocutor, the guy against which I am debating, asks the question, how can political correctness possibly do more harm than good? And this was his take. He said, the whole enterprise is designed to help the oppressed. How could it possibly do any harm? Now, of course, the, the entire book is the answer to that question, but let me give you a direct example of that one today. We have a group in South Africa called the Economic Freedom Fighters, EFF. Think communists in red uniforms with less of a sense of humor. Now, here's what's happened. Their whole worldview, their politics, is informed by this new idea of intersectional identity politics, which is the concept of essentially pitting groups against one another and trying to work out hierarchies of who is previously empowered and who is previously oppressed. Now, why would that be a problem? Well, a couple of years ago, Google gets hauled before the US Congress, and they ask them a question because of all of their, their interfering in, um, in their algorithms in favor of leftist politics. They ask them the question, what do you understand by the term fair? What does fair mean to you? And they answer, I kid you not, Fair is the suppression of voices in power. Fair is the suppression of established voices and the uplifting of marginalized voices. Now, you and I may have a very different take on what fair is. I, for example, think fair means speak the truth and that every instance should be weighed up on its own merits. That's not how leftists think, and that's fascinating. So here comes this group called the EFF, and they're communist to the core, and they have heard about a high school that is having a racist gathering. Racist gatherings at high schools. Now, here's what's actually happened. A group of kids from this school, and it's a group of white kids, have decided that even though their matric farewell has been cancelled because of the coronavirus crisis, a group of friends get together and they have an event of their own. Now, in a nation where you have democracy and freedom of association, a group of friends is allowed to get together and have an event of their own. Now, what happens then is the EFF gets wind of this and seeking relevance because really you, you have to be this desperate for attention that you would go and attack a school. They go to the school and they go and cause trouble. Now, this happens a couple of times. Yesterday, a group of parents arrives at the school and forms a barricade because the kids are writing exams. And here's the EFF and they're dancing and shouting and singing and trying to cause trouble. This is the same group that took offense at a hair advert um, and found this racist and went and attacked various stores. They went to the stores where they were being sold and looted the place. So that's the, the caliber of thinking that you're discussing here. Mob justice supreme. What they then do is they go to the school the second day and the parents chase them away. But this turns violent. It actually, it, it turns ugly. They are back again today. Now, let me ask you the question. What does a win look like for them? What are they trying to accomplish? Here's a group of students, they've had their event, they are now trying to write their exams. And outside are a group of communists in red overalls trying to, what? To protest something? Well, your protest was against racism, but it turned out not to be true. So you're there to protest, what? Now, there's a degree to which I look at that and I say, well, that's just communists doing what communists do. Violent revolution and onto the barricades, comrades and break things is baked into the system. Now, that's not to say that they are not personally accountable for the thing that they do. And that, of course, is the delusion under which mobs operate, that if we're all doing it together, it's morally acceptable. Absolutely untrue. You do not diffuse moral accountability because you are a mob. Being part of a mob makes you morally accountable. You've already done something wrong. But in a sense, I get it. It's communists doing what they do. Now, here's who I really take issue with. It's not them so much as it is the woke enablers of people like that. You know this guy. You've met him. You've encountered him on Facebook. This is the white progressive liberal who likes to make noble sacrifices on behalf of other people, but it doesn't cost him anything. This is the person who likes to stand and throw stones at other people. And you've met him. This is a highly educated man who is 
has a great degree of academic knowledge, but no wisdom. This is not a man who actually cares about other people. This is a man who likes to play identity politics. He gets to virtue signal to the world. He has a doctorate. You've met this man, but the doctorate is from the sociology department, which is kind of akin to saying that he's a trained Marxist dialectician. And he likes to say things like, you don't understand this group's suffering, so sit down, shut up, and try to learn something. Where does that come from? It comes from a couple of toxic thinkers on the left. The first is Foucault, a French philosopher, and God save us from French philosophers. Here's what Foucault said. He was a postmodern relativist, which essentially means that he does not believe in singular truth. He doesn't believe that science is true, that any one narrative is true. Instead, his, his idea was that all things are just competing powers. Now, from the dawn of philosophy, from the time of, of people like Aristotle, right up to modern day, the first thing philosophy has taught is represent the ideas of your opposition in their strongest form and assume good intentions unless proven otherwise. Foucault topples that. He turns it around. He says, assume bad intentions behind the mask of your opponent. And also, don't engage with their ideas. Assume that there is a power structure advancing behind the words. And what you must do is you must combat the power structure. And that's the beginning, that's the birth of identity politics, where instead of trying to understand one another, instead of trying to represent one another's arguments in the strongest form and look for good ways forward, no, what you do is you tell people, you're a white man, you're the wrong demographic, therefore your ideas are invalid. Sit down, shut up, and try to learn something. It's also a technique that comes from a guy called uh, Saul Alinsky. Saul Alinsky wrote a book called Rules for Radicals, which is also it's a communist uh, guide to how to attack the other side of the aisle, how to attack the classical liberal, how to attack the conservative, how to attack the old order. And one of the techniques that he points out is he says, you must simply poke and prod until something collapses. Now, here's how you'll see it from your woke progressive liberal friends. They'll say things like, oh, well, you know, they're, 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 they're protesting racism. And you say, but hang on just a second. We had former black students of that school go and defend the school against the EFF. It is clearly not a race issue. At which point they'll say, well, that may be true, but hasn't the school failed to transform enough? Isn't the, uh, the staff compliment not sufficiently representative? And that's where you should say, stop. So you concede you've lost the first argument. Your entire reason for justifying a mob attacking a school has been dismissed as a fraud, but you'd like to change arguments and continue to justify a mob attack on a school. What the hell is wrong with you? And this is why I have such a problem with woke progressive political correctness. It starts off saying, but isn't it just about uplifting the poor? Isn't it just about being kind? And it ends in mobs attacking schools as woke liberal progressives egg them on. You are accountable for that. Here's another of Saul Alinsky's techniques. He says that you should de-platform people in exactly the same way that our woke liberal progressive friends do by denying them the possibility of speaking. And your friends will do it this way. They'll say, sit down, shut up, and try to learn something. It only works if you allow it to work. Sound logical thinking and good philosophy is about the idea, not the speaker. They're trying to reverse that, to use identity politics to say it's about the identity of the speaker, not the quality of the idea. It only works if you allow it to. You reject it, you laugh at them, and you speak the truth. And speaking the truth is the thing here. That is the way out of the identity politics trap. You have political correctness on one side, and people assume that you have a lack of kindness or a lack of civility on the other. It is not true. The other side of that spectrum is speaking the truth. Now, you can speak the truth with kindness and civility. You can help people from oppressed demographics without being unkind. But if you are not speaking the truth, you are not being kind to them. You are being condescending and vaguely racist in the sense that you assume they can't handle the truth.
Now, folks, the um, the interview with Gareth Cliff will be on Wednesday night on ETV. If you'd like to check that one out, I will add it to the channel as well. Um, and if you are interested in, in acquiring the book, it's not available in South Africa in paperback form yet, but you can get the ebook and you will soon be able to get the audio book. Um, so do just check that out on Amazon.com. As soon as the paperback becomes available in South Africa, I'll let you know as well. Please follow this channel, Breaking Woke. The whole concept here is that I show you the flaws, the fallacies, and the underpinning errors in the thinking and how to debunk them. There's another guy I'd like you to follow, please. His name is Big Daddy Liberty. Uh, this is quite a, a, a strange creature. He is a black Zulu Jewish conservative. <laughs> and a wonderful man who speaks the truth. Um, he's done a couple of takes on this particular one as well. His whole ethos is faith, family, flag, freedom. And I think those are qualities worth defending. For my part, I say you can have political correctness or you can have truth, but you can't have both. So how does political correctness hurt demographics? That's how your woke liberal progressive friends with their doctorates in theology and from the humanities egg people on and talk about how evil this group is and how righteous that group is without any contact with reality. And the next thing, mobs form at schools and carry out unwinnable games. What are they hoping to achieve? What does a win look like for them? Does the school burn? Do they chase the children fleeing into the suburbs? Do, do they have another fight with the parents? What does a win look like for them? Or is it just about getting attention? Boy, that would be a sad reason to attack children.